Hello everybody. Uh, so today we will discuss about poisonous and non-poisonous snakes. And there are a couple of features which you have to identify in a snake. So let us, uh, let us understand what are the main features which you need to study and afterwards we will try to consider the other points as well of lesser importance. Now first of all we need to understand that the snakes are of two types that is the venomous and non-venomous. When you talk about venomous snakes we, we are referring to the poisonous snakes that is those snakes in which the venom is found. Now where is the venom found? It is found in uh, it's actually generated by the by the salivary glands and uh, so uh, venom glands are present very in close uh, almost very close to the in this region very close to the eye this is the eye and this is the nostril right so uh, in close proximity to the eye region in the temporal um, area the venom glands or the modified salivary glands are present and these are connected by a little duct which opens into uh, two sharp very big teeth these are the maxillary teeth and they are referred to as the fangs. In some uh, poisonous snakes you find only one fang and in some you find two. So the uh, fangs are located on the upper jaw. And these fangs have either a small canal or a, a little groove inside. So when the snake bites a victim you find uh, where the fangs are present there two big wounds or one single wound may be created which is big and circular and uh, these are the smaller teeth so the smaller teeth just create pinpricks so if you find a wound on the victim's body which has a one or two cir big circular wounds then you're probably looking at a snake bite uh, by that is where the venomous snake has bitten the victim. Now uh, this is a non-venomous snake or a non-poisonous snake where the venom is not produced. So in these individuals you find that no fangs are present and uh, small teeth are present on both the jaws. So when these non-poisonous snakes bite you just find an elliptical shaped wound uh, consisting of minor pin pricks so by, just by looking at the wound we will be able to say whether the victim has been bitten by a poisonous or a non-poisonous snake. Now the first thing that we deal with uh, is uh, first aid has to be given uh, when a person is, um, uh, has been bitten by the poisonous snake. And we must remember that the venom is actually made up of a combination of proteins, uh, uh, proteins and enzymes and certain other substances. And the, the venom or the poison can be of three types. One is it could be hematotoxin or hemotoxin. And hemotoxin would mean that it uh, goes and paralyzes the cardiovascular system and causes ultimately hemorrhages. Or it could be the neurotoxin where it paralyzes the central nervous system and which ultimately as, uh, affects the cardiovascular system or the circulatory system and the respiration. And it can be also cytotoxic in uh, which case uh, the the tissue uh, is totally destroyed. So this is about the venom and the poisonous snake. Now let us try to understand what are the different features we will consider uh, in order to identify the snake. First of all we will look at the tail. Now if the tail is uh, very uh, flat, laterally, laterally compressed flat tail then you are looking at the hydrophis or the sea snake which is a poisonous snake because this tail helps to propel the snake through the water. And if you are looking at a tail which is almost like a cylindrical tail which tapers and uh, if you consider the scales on the tail uh, you find that these are in one or two rows. 
So these scales are referred to as caudals and if the caudals are present in two rows, it is probably a land snake. So uh, the cylindrical tail with the, the caudals is probably a land snake. Of course, there could be some variations. So it could be a poisonous snake or a non-poisonous snake. We just can't rule out that because in certain uh, non -poison, uh, in certain poisonous snakes also you do find that the caudals are present in two rows. Next is you will look to the belly that is the ventral side. On the ventral side if the scales are small then it is definitely non poisonous and these uh, scales are also referred to as the ventrals. Now look at this here the scales are larger and they are present on the ventral side and uh, but they do not touch the lateral sides of the of the snake so this again is non poisonous but in the next uh, diagram we see that the uh, ventrals are so large that they extend from one side of the animal to the other side so on the and this is on the ventral side right these are ventrals so such very large scales are referred to as shields and this is this could be present in the poisonous so such in such cases it could be non poisonous or poisonous snake next you look to the head suppose the head is oval or rect or triangular in form and it can be delineated from the rest of the body by a short neck so the neck is almost like a little constriction so in this case you, you will observe the scales present on the uh, on the head if these are very small and minute scales and uh, you are probably looking at the pitless viper which is a poisonous snake but here uh, the same scales uh, they have get modified and they become large and now they are referred to as the shields so these cephalic shields are present but you find between the eye and the nostril there is a little pit and the pit is the l'oreal pit which helps to judge the temperature around the snake so if your pit is found along with the cephalic large cephalic shields you're looking at a pit viper which is a poisonous snake but say you find shields are present large cephalic shields are present no pit is there and no um, no other external marking then you are probably you are looking at a poisonous or non poisonous because you have to correlate this finding with some other uh, some other feature in order to understand whether it is poisonous or non poisonous next is you look at the supra shield now what do we mean by supra shield uh, now this is the eye and this is the nostril and starting from the nostril you will start counting the shields okay these are the cephalic shields because they are present on the head so the, this is the first shield second and third and so the third shield is big here now this is this portion is the upper jaw or the upper lip and this lower portion is the lower jaw or the lower lip so if you are looking at the shield which is present on the upper jaw or upper lip you call it as a supralabial shield and in this case the third supralabial shield is very big so in case of cobra you find this kind of arrangement that is the third supralabial shield is present and this is a poisonous snake next you do not find the in this particular snake you do not find the supra uh, labial shield but on the lower jaw you find the fourth cephalic shield is very big so lower jaw would mean the infralabial so here it is the fourth infralabial shield which is big and this is in case of crate which is again poisonous and another feature that you find in case of crate is on the dorsal side the scales are referred to as the dorsals right and along the spinal cord they are referred to as the spinals 
or the vertebrals. So these, the vertebrals are huge in case of the uh, crate and these are almost hexagonal. They are hexagonal. Uh, so in this case, this is definitely uh, another feature by which you can say uh, that uh, you are looking at the dorsal side of a crate and this is poisonous. So two features you must remember in case of the crate. One is the fourth infralabial and the second is the dorsals or the vertebrals which are huge. Now there are certain other features which we must consider. First of all always look to the color. Now the color in case of the poisonous snakes it is usually bright color. It could be red, pink and different colors. Whereas in if you are looking at uh, the non-poisonous snakes, then you are probably looking at uh, uh, something like uh, gray or, uh, or uh, brown or some very dull shades. Next is uh, you will look at the shields, the, the, the shields and the shape of the head. Now, uh, if you are looking at the shape of the head, as I showed you here, suppose it is uh, almost triangular, oval in structure and, and tapers at the point where the neck is present, then you are looking at a poisonous snake. Such a, a, a neck is never present in a non-poisonous snake and the head merges uh, or sort of passes insensibly into the rest of the body. Next is, if you are looking at the pupils, if you are looking at the pupils, then you will find that the pupils in case of the, in, in most of the cases, you will find that the pupils are almost uh, um, a tr a transverse or slit-like, uh, uh, like vertical slits in, ca uh, in case of the poisonous snakes. Of course, and in the non-poisonous snakes, you will find that these are present in form of round structures round structures of course uh, this is uh, in, uh, such uh, pupils round pupils may be found in case of the poison snakes also next is we look to the hood now where is the hood present in the last class i told you that the neck in case of the cobra now, in case of the cobra, the neck uh, suddenly swells up or it dilates and it forms the hood. So, a hood is present only in the cobra and such an arrangement and that is a poisonous snake, right? But uh, hood ne is never present in others, whether it is poisonous or non-poisonous. Next is the tail. I have already shown you the tail. The tail, if it is flat, laterally compressed, then you are looking at the rudder-like tail of the water snakes or the sea snakes, like the hydrophis. The head scales. Next is the head scales. Uh, if these are very small, then, um, then you are looking at the venomous snake, that is the pitless viper. And if they are very large, they are referred to as the cephalic shields. And when the cephalic shields are present, it may be poisonous or non-poisonous. Next, you will look at the dorsals. Dorsals are those uh, scales which are present on the dorsal side of the animal and those uh, uh, scales which are big are the shields and they are and so we observe the shields on along the spinal cord and these are referred to as the vertebrals so if vertebrals are present then you are looking at a poisonous snake then you look at the l'oreal uh, pit now the l'oreal pit is between the eye and the nostril so if the L'Oreal pit is present, it's a pit viper, poisonous snake. Then the third supralabial shield as found in the cobra and the fourth infralabial as found in the crate. These two are indications that these are the poisonous snakes. Next, look at the caudals. Where are the caudals found? On the tail. And if they are present in a single row, then probably non-poisonous. But if they are present in double rows, 
sorry if they are present in double rows then they are usually non poisonous but in some poisonous snakes also they are uh, double rows are present so if a, just a single row is of uh, caudals is present then you are looking at a poisonous snake next is we do understand about the teeth right so the teeth or the fangs are present and these are maxillary in origin a position and uh, they are connected to the salivary glands or the poison glands by means of a duct so fangs are present only in the venomous or the poison snakes and apart from this you also find that the lungs are present but uh, only one lung lung may be present in the poisonous snakes whereas in uh, in case of the non poisonous you find both the lungs may be present and poison is generated only in the poisonous snakes in the non poisonous snakes there's no poison so these are some of the features of the poisonous and non poisonous snakes so we understand in today's class we have looked at the major points of difference between the poisonous and non poisonous we have understood that uh, right from a tail which is flat and rudder like uh, which is present in poisonous uh, and then uh, we find that uh, usually a single row of uh, caudals is present in poisonous then usually the shields or uh, uh, ventral shields uh, extend from side to side small scales are present on the head uh, uh, loreal pit is present or infralabial the third supralabial and fourth infralabial or the hexagonal vertebrals being present all these are indications of the a poisonous snake apart from the fact that the poisonous snakes have fangs <laughs>